G'day, g'day. Today we have a goalkeeping pro clubs, whatever you want to call it, 11v11 eSport meta build video just for you. And if you've watched any of my past videos, you'll know that, you know, I edit my voice in and out and fuck that. I'm not going to bother today. We're just going to discuss the build, the weight, the height, the skill tree, what makes it so good, how to use it, why you should trust me and all that good stuff. Just so you guys can trust what I'm saying, I've played pro clubs for about six or seven years now and I've done it competitively for about five of those. So I definitely have a clue on how to goalkeep and the builds that you should be looking out for. I compete in one of the biggest and best pro clubs 11v11 competitions in the world and often more than not you're coming up against some of the best pro club strikers but you learn a lot from that and you learn what goalkeeping builds work and what don't and alongside that i'm just going to explain why you shouldn't trust builds that are say you know we're in the top 100 top 50 in the world or this or that or it's rubbish because if you're believing that you're believing someone that's probably versing two-man teams or three-man teams and you know they're just cheesing them and scoring stupid goals and it's not really reflective of the build it's just reflective of easy competition and by easy competition i mean you're versing ais most of the time and so let's jump right into it i'm currently running six foot five as my height i used to do a lot of six six often i do six four two six six i just found it to be too slow with reactions and diving and you did have the height advantage which is good especially with long shots and stuff but whenever you're coming up against 1v1s and 2v1s and a lot of the near shots and close proximity to the six yard box you want a bit of a shorter build so you can get on the ground quicker so you can react quicker so you can dive faster so your reflexes are a bit more accurate i also found with 6.5 you get just a bit better animations more often than not it's not always perfect but if you dive the right way you save it and that's the most important thing for me you also rush out a lot quicker in my opinion it might not reflect that on the stats but Every time I've used six foot five, you know, he gets there quickly. His re reactions to the shot are quick. If a player wants to try to chip you or even try to run past you, he's often, you know, he gets the right animations to reach the ball. Not only that, but you can just do a bit more with especially double saves. You want to make, you know, a good save. And if it's still a loose ball, you're able to get up just that bit quicker and make another save on top of that. And it just looks so much better. And it just feels a bit more lighter and looser. And, you know, that tiny difference makes all the difference in the world especially when you want to be you know up there and competing with some of the best goalkeepers you want to be making the saves that others don't and often more than not if you're using six foot five i just feel you're able to do that a bit more effectively what i will say is if you're a goalkeeper that's going to be facing a lot of shots go six foot five however if you're going to be you know facing a little less shots more so long shots from outside the box because your defense is just so compact and good. You maybe, maybe can get away with 6-6, six, six, but I still think 6-5 does still a better job even when your defense is, you know, really killing it. It's just overall such a better hide for me anyway. Onto the weight. Now, I used to run... I think over 200 pounds back in the day and it worked good for me. However, every FIFA and, you know, every couple of months I realized it's just not doing it and you just feel that bit more clunky and you need to reduce the weight more and more and more and I've realized that through years of experience against some of the best pro club strikers and I've realized it just goes hand in hand with the height if you will you know you're going at a good height to be quick and efficient and effective and but if you're at a weight that's really heavy then it's just going to sort of counteract that and it's not going to be the most effective uh, balance but if you're at a lower weight you more so just feel lighter and quicker is the most important thing and you're able to get on the ground and make a save and get up just instantly there's no point having a low sort of height if you will and a heavy build it's not like you get the boost uh, you get the best of both worlds you want to be going also light and that's why i'm running 130 pounds as of right now doing that it makes you rush out so much quicker it gives you a better reaction to shots and getting up you know when you just move the left stick and the right stick to you know move around and dive 
it just feels more instant and more responsive if you will you know you don't have to worry about oh am i gonna feel a bit too like a truck or oh, i'm not gonna be able to reach that in time or this or that there's no point if you're going a bit shorter you want to go light and that just really it perfectly suits each other you know you're specializing in a build that's light that's quick that's efficient that has good reflexes that has good reactions to every movement that you want to make that rushes out quickly it, i could just go on and on and on so six foot five 130 pounds it's just a perfect combination for me anyway and by perfect i mean you're not going to be saving every shot and it's not going to bail bail you out if you're making mistakes instead if you're doing the right thing and you're experienced and you know how to use your left and right stick and you know when to rush out and all sort of the you just have a grasp on how to goal keep you know even just the basics then this build will really help and advantage you it'll help you from the beginning when you're really focused on trying to be a good goalkeeper it'll really compliment you but also when you get to that more experienced stage and you know where players are going to shoot and you just know how to position yourself a bit better it perfectly helps that and from my experience this build it really benefits you and it really helps you and it makes you feel like yeah i can be making big saves and be doing good things that you know maybe other goalkeepers can't do now onto the skill tree and straight away you want to put all your goalkeeping on that should be the first thing that you focus on no fucking around no bullshit just straight up slap everything on your goalkeeping from reflexes to diving to positioning to long kick and long throw and all that good stuff get that up first if you want to focus on which one to specialize in first go on the left side you know you get the reflexes and handling and positioning first and you can also get that long throw which is super important second pace max that out straight away too mate straight after goalkeeping sorry you want to be getting that pace up especially when you're rushing out you don't want to be feeling like a truck and when you're already a bit shorter and low weight when you slap in on all your pace you just feel lining quick and if you know when to rush out you're able to get to the ball and stop shots and you know a player takes a touch and you're already at his feet ready to sweep and it's just so effective and efficient you know it just feels so good when you're controlling this build that's quick and agile and you just don't want to change it for anything you just want to keep improving with it and slapping all your pace on you know the acceleration to sprint speed it it's just so effective for you now here's where it gets maybe a little bit more controversial i know a lot of goalkeepers choose different sort of aspects and different traits to focus on however i'm going to move on to dribbling and i'm going to explain why you should focus on also agility and balance now you don't want to be maxing out all your dribbling traits but the ones that you should be focusing on is that left side that agility balance and also there's one that has both of them the agility and balance trade you want to be reaching that and that you know second that split second it's just so important especially when there's attackers rushing at you and the game's really fast paced you know if you take a heavy touch and the ball's away from you you're already at a disadvantage then you might play a shit ball and you lose possession and concede from it anyway or someone steals it from you and you concede a really bad goal you, you don't want any of that you want good ball control you want good agility you want good balance why because especially when you're taking a touch you know someone passes to you or you've got a loose ball and you want to play it out quick or when you just want to you know control the ball you want to dribble a little bit with it at the back and draw the attack out the ball's just so much closer to you and you feel so much more responsive you don't have a heavy touch you don't feel like a truck you know you don't feel like you're gonna lose the ball by anyone stealing it from you at any time it's at your feet it's right there you're able to control it quickly and you're able to play a long or short pass you know instantaneously so get the agility and balance up and it'll really benefit you and last but not least the passing Get the short passing and long passing up 100%. You don't want to be, you know, getting the crossing advanced focus or the giant throwing rubbish. You don't need that. It's just the curve, you know, the curve advanced focus, the crossing, the long passing, the short passing. If you're a goalkeeper that gets the ball a lot to his feet and you just want to play a, you know, perfectly timed pass, you want that curve, you know, especially when you're playing it to the right or left winger or you're playing it to the right or left back and you just want a quick efficient and effective pass that gets there you know straight away you need to have good passing and 
like I've said before, possession is so important. You don't want to be losing the ball stupidly and then losing possession and then you lose momentum. You need to have good passing just so your teammates have more time on the ball so you're not going to lose the ball when you have it at feet so you can play out a good pass. It's just so important. And for me, it's the dribbling and the passing that, you know, you can choose either way, you know, focus on passing first and then move on to the dribbling or vice versa or do a bit of both at the same time. Um, either way, they're just so important. Obviously, pace and goalkeeping, focus on them first and then the dribbling passing comes after that. Definitely get those two up. This build's doing me really good at the moment. I'm playing a competitive 11v11 league, one of the hardest in the world. And, you know, you, I've ended up getting the second most clean sheets, a whole bunch of saves. We're into the final four. Not only that, but anytime you come up against an 11-man team, you just feel so efficient and effective and you're able to make good saves. And anytime you move your left or right stick, it's responsive and reactive and it's just you're in control. And that's the most important thing. As long as you're in control of your build and you know, you, you feel like you're there, you know, you want to dive this way and he does it. Not always is EA going to reward you, but as long as you're mostly getting good animations and it's responsive and it's doing what you want him to do, then you're set and, you, you know, you're doing the right thing. So you're going to get rewarded a lot of the time and most of the time and 99% of the time. So that's the most important thing. As long as you're doing the right thing most of the time and you have a build that rewards you for that, you know, a lot of the time and most of the time, no build's gonna always be perfect and make right saves every time you dive the right way. Like sometimes you'll get a shit animation no matter what build you have, but it's just the build that does it most of the time. And I feel this is really it. So that's coming from me, my goalkeeping build. But the most important thing is get that experience up, get that goalkeeping up, keep grinding, you know, learn the positioning of a goalkeeper, learn when to rush out, when to use your right stick, how to use it. and that's the most important thing and you want a good build that will complement that and this definitely does it. However, I will be doing goalkeeping tips and tricks videos that will benefit you as a goalkeeper so definitely keep an eye out for that. That's all for me, thank you very much for watching and I hope you do well as a goalkeeper.